Bryce Young time, number one overall, 5'10 and 1 eighth, somehow weighed 204. He chugged more water than Chase Popel <laughs> did a few years ago. He ain't playing at 204. My comp for him is Russell Wilson. I changed it because I'm going to get all the Wilsons in the league involved in this podcast. Um, Russell Wilson pre-Denver, by the way. Obviously, aside from the fact that he's 5'10 and a quarter and weighs 204 or whatever, any concerns about Bryce Young? Yeah, outside of the durability factor, which again, I mean, he obviously was durable during his time at Bama. And I think the one thing that uh, reminds me of your comp for him, Russell Wilson, and that would be my comp as well. I think size-wise, uh, they're almost the exact same, combine uh, height as well as weight. But uh, Russell does a really good job of, of, of usually taking care of himself. Now, there are, all, are always instances where you get blasted you know, with a guy you don't see. But for the most part, when he would scramble around and create and run, he would be able to protect himself uh, at that size. He was very cognizant of that. Uh, Bryce Young, very similar in that, in that, from that standpoint. I think the biggest difference is like Bryce comes as a much more refined pocket passer. He throws with anticipation. He's extremely accurate. He's got a, a, a high football IQ. And, and what really strikes me as the most like uncanny thing that he does is the way he's able to throw with, out his bottom half at all. I mean, his feet can be in whatever place they want, and he could still throw an accurate football pretty much anywhere down the field. Uh, he really does have something about the way he he manipulates the pocket and moves around to throw. It almost reminds me of and and you know, not that boxing is great to watch anymore, but uh, back in the day, you watch some of the, the greatest boxers of all time. You know, Sugar Ray, some of them, the way they manipulate the ring to throw like an overhand knockout right. That's that's almost how it reminds me of how he navigates the pocket where he's just waiting, waiting, waiting and setting up to be able to, you know, take that big knockout, you know, punch. Um, at times he has a tendency to hold on to the football too long to try to look for something bigger downfield. You saw that a little more this year though because I think the receivers had a harder time uh, separating and getting open. But that being said, he's just such a uniquely talented quarterback. Um, I, I've said this to a bunch of people. Like I – Really enjoyed watching him every single week. Every I'd, I'd watch his tape every single week. It was like it was like just a pleasure to watch as, as a former quarterback watching a current guy the way he plays the game. So excited to see where he goes and how things pan out for him. Uh, but he's a tremendous young man too. All right, let's talk about that because Rick, we know how you feel about Bryce the same way Brady feels and the same way everyone except Pete Prisco feels. Who, by the way, still has Br Bryce as his QB one. He just likes to stir the pot. Um. The thing that comes, like, if there was one word to describe Bryce, I think it's unflappable. And his teammates said that. We talked to five or six of his teammates last week. Every single one of them, all defenders, all saw him every day in practice, marveled at his ability just to stand in the pocket. We were just talking about C.J. Stroud and pressure and seemed like there was no pressure at all and continue to make plays. Rick, is there a team that you feel like makes the most sense for, for Bryce uh, to get hit the ground running and get his career going on day one, um, more so than the others of the team that needs quarterbacks. So obviously, if he goes to San Francisco, they're going to win a Super Bowl. Yeah, I want to add to a great point that you just made, uh, Ryan Wilson, uh, is that uh, we even talked to players that played against them, a la Juju Brents, and talked oh, yeah. about how fascinated, I want to say fascinated, but just he said that is something unique when we had to play against a player like that. And you don't expect that when he walks out on the field. He's not going to be the first guy <laughs> that you uh, towed off the bus to show, hey, this is our starting quarterback. <laughs> right. But once he puts that helmet on and uh, that whistle blows, uh, I, I haven't seen anyone play quarterback position like he does with such savvy such awareness, just a natural feel for the position in, in a while. And I know uh, Brady, because uh, Pete Prisco will rip me and everybody else will rip me, but when you talked about him being able to make those same type throws without setting his feet and, and throwing from different platforms where his arm's up here and sometimes it's here and doing all this stuff, I said not size-wise, but his style of play reminded me of some of the things that you see Patrick Mahomes do on the field. Now, everybody, well, well Ryan Wilson laughs at me and, uh, right, and uh, Pete Prisco laughs at me, and that's fine. I'm here to build everybody's self-esteem up. But I do think he has some very <laughs> unique talents and traits. And best place for him is I think they're crazy if Houston does not take him because you're playing indoors, you're playing in the AFC South, maybe. Maybe people would be concerned if he had to go up and be the 
starting quarterback in Green Bay or Buffalo where you're playing in cold weather, Chicago, outdoors. But if the Houston Texans take him and playing in the stadiums and in the division that they play in, I think he's going to excel as a rookie right off the bat. No, I think that's exactly right. 